This is Paul Hamilton, producer of the Rotax 912 Introduction DVD. Here we will provide updates to the DVD so you can stay informed and up to date. Let's visit Rotax experts Phil Lockwood and Dean Vogel for updates to the DVD. So this is the uh, Rotax oil pressure sending unit, actually made by VDO. They've been using these for years. And on the right side of the oil pump is the oil pressure sending unit, which is going to supply pressure information to your pressure gauge, oil pressure gauge in the cockpit. On the newer engines coming out now, Rotax has changed to a new oil pressure sending unit made by Honeywell. And uh, the, the, uh, the outputs for both of these are analog, uh, very similar, except that this one is resistive, this one is uh, compensated by uh, some ASIC technology. Uh, that means that this one is affected by system voltage, this one is not. Uh, this one is solid state, probably going to be much re more reliable than the old one, and it's much lighter than the old one. But because they have different outputs, uh, in most cases the same gauge will not work. Right. So if you're buying a new engine and you have uh, an oil pressure sending unit or a gauge that is made for this output, it will not work with that sender. So you have a couple of choices if you're, uh, if you're updating. You, you can buy one of these and swap it out and then your older gauge will work or you can update your gauge. Some of the gauges like the Dynon, can, you can change the software and then they'll actually read this. What oil should I be using in my Rotax engine? We're going to do a complete oil section here because I've seen very few people understanding or using the proper oil. Well, we have a couple of choices uh, that, we've, that we know have been approved by Rotax. The mobile one is a full synthetic oil, and the full synthetic oils give a number of advantages. They, they have excellent high temperature protection, um, but we like the mobile for a couple of reasons. One, they've approved the automotive version, which I'm sure the, the motorcycle version is based on, but the motorcycle version of this oil has the gear anti-wear package in it, which helps uh, protect the gearbox and uh, Rotax has long recommended the motorcycle oils because of that fact that motorcycles typically lubricate their gearboxes with engine oil and that's what we do in the 9 series engine. So that, that uh, motorcycle version does give us an advantage there. Now the Mobile One is, uh, is really a good oil for the 914 Turbo, uh, particularly if you're uh, not going to let the turbo cool down as you should. Uh, if you don't let it cool down, you can get coking on the uh, turbine bearings, and that'll eventually cause the bearings to fail. Mobile One is less prone to that because of its uh, extreme capability uh, with high temperatures. The Mobile One products, Racing 4T and V-Twin, different names, but all they are is different viscosities. The Racing uh, 4T is a 10W40, the V-Twin is a 20W50 oil, uh, why is that important? Well, if you look in your operations manual, they will show you uh, a temperature chart very similar to what you would see in an automotive maintenance manual, or uh, operator's manual, rather. Let's go to the updated information and find the operations manual and the table that Dean's talking about. First thing we do is we go up here and we type in Rotax-Aircraft dash engines dot com and we'll go to the Rotax website and this is taking a while to load okay once we're at the Rotax website we're going to click on documentation and in the documentation we're going to go down to engine type and we're going to select 912 document type we're going to select operators manual and we're going to hit search database. We can see that under the operations manual there's two documents so we're going to click on this PDF file and download the operations manual. It takes a little while to download this particular one is 1.55 megabytes. The document has loaded. I like to see the pages here so we'll go to the table of contents and we'll look at the operating instructions operating media they have and that looks like lubricants is page 10-11 so we'll go to page 10-11 we'll page on down here 
And essentially, we go to the table right here where we can see the oil, the oil weights. We can see how 1040 goes all the way down below zero. So here's the particular table in the updated operations manual for the oils. It's that simple and easy to get in here and look at the updated information. To that effect, the 10W40 is going to cover the temperature range that the vast majority of people are sure. going to be operating their engines under. Sure. 2050 would be good under very hot conditions. Might give you an edge, but it's only good down to about freezing. So you would uh, you'd have to go to the 1040 in colder temperatures. Now, uh, a new oil uh, that's become available is this new Shell uh, oil, oil Sport Plus 4. Uh, Shell, working with Rotax, developed this oil just for the Rotax 9 series engines. Uh, it's a 10W40, so as we just mentioned, it'll work under almost any temperature condition. It's a semi-synthetic, so it offers some of the pluses that a full synthetic has, but it uses Shell's experience working with Avgas and a tremendous amount of lead that is in 100LL. Uh, we expect to get good results because of their experience. So this, this oil can be used with uh, Avgas, with Autogas, or any mix in between. Whereas with the Mobile One, full synthetic, great product, but we prefer that you use that with the unleaded gasoline. And uh, if you're using a lot of Avgas, you, you probably want to steer away from that because we know that the base stock that Mobile uses to make their product does not uh, react well with tetraethyl lead. In fact, it, it will build up lead paste in your engine and can cause uh, uh, blockage of the oil passageways. And it can play havoc with the, the sprag clutch, which we've seen, and, and other parts of the engine. It's also important that we kind of let you know when you should be worried about uh, using the, uh, the, the full synthetic or the semi-synthetic and what oil change intervals you should use. Now, one of the advantages of the 9 Series engine is because of its tight tolerances and because of the fact that we're using modern automobile oil and technology and metal technology, we can go 100 hours between oil change intervals. And we have a lot of experience going 100 hours and the engine will do it. Even running at 5,500 RPM continuous, it'll go 100 hours if uh, you're using unleaded auto gas. Uh, so, and, and provided your oil temperatures are within the acceptable range that Rotax recommends, between 190 and uh, 230 degrees would be ideal. Uh, so, um, if, you're, if you're running a semi-synthetic like this shell, or a full synthetic uh, like the Mobile One, you could actually go 100 hours. Now, if you're using 100 low lead, and they use the actual wording mainly on unleaded avgas and and they actually describe that as more than 30 percent avgas i realize avgas has about 18 times as much lead as leaded automobile gas had back in the 60s it's low lead compared to some other aviation fuels that we've had but it has a tremendous amount of lead in it so if you're more than 30 percent avgas usage then you need to drop back to 50 hour oil change intervals they also use the wording primarily when operating primarily on avgas, and we interpret that to mean more than 50% avgas usage, then they recommend that you drop back to 25 hour oil change intervals. This is because you don't want that lead to get built up in the oil. We have a relatively small quantity of oil, only a little more than three quarts, and that helps keep the package light. It, it's, it's all we need to cool and lubricate the engine, but it's going to become contaminated fairly quickly. And when that happens, the lead's going to go somewhere. And unless you change it out, you're going to be giving your engine the, the equivalent of arteriosclerosis. Right, right. Okay. Change your oil, become familiar with, uh, with this service instruction and the other guidance that Rotax gives you, and you'll be, you'll be having good flying. Since this is such an important document and it's a little trickier to find, let's go in again and find this. So again, we go in and type in rotax-aircraft-engines.com, and we'll go to documentation. Uh, engine type 912, document type, here we're going to be looking for the service instruction, search database. Okay, now when we get here, we can see there's a whole bunch of them. Since I know where this one is, it's at the bottom here, they're all in order. We're going to go down to SI 912016, and we're going to go ahead and download that PDF. Here we are, we're going to show our pages. There's no table of contents here, so we're going to look, and what we see here first is operation with unleaded and low lead gas, using auto gas, the specifics there. The next page is operation with leaded, avgas, 
And then we go into the details of the coolant, fuel, that is the up-to-date information on all the fluids, including fuel, oil, and coolant. And finally, an important update is the to be overhauled or TBO'd being extended to 2,000 hours for new and some existing engines. Find details on the web as we've covered and service bold to 912.057 for existing engines that qualify. The techniques we've reviewed today are very important to giving you trouble-free operation. There you have the important changes for the Rotex 912 introduction. These are in addition to the existing DVD.